evening, everyone, and welcome to the third annual Charlestown Pirate Football Preseason Preview Show. I'm Bud McCraw, and I'm joined by my new football broadcasting partner, Brian Keith, as well as Charlestown High School head football coach, Jason Hawkins. This year, we're coming to you from Dutch Reese Field, site of the annual Pirate Football Blue-White Scrimmage, brought to you by Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting and the Digital Connectors of Charlestown. This special edition of Talk with Hawk features preseason discussion, an outlook on the upcoming 2011 Pirate and Mid-Southern Conference football schedules with Charlestown head football coach Jason Hawkins. Coach, welcome to the preseason show. I know you're excited to get started, as we all are, another season of Pirate football. As my partner just alluded to, this year's broadcasting season, we're coming live from the preseason show during the annual Pirate football blue-white scrimmage from Dutch Reese Field at Charlestown High School. Thanks for joining us, Pirate Nation. We promise you 50 minutes of interesting Pirate football preseason conversation and outlook. See right where you are, Pirate fans. We're ready for some football in the third annual Charlestown Pirate football season preview show. Get started following these messages from our sponsors. Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating, your local provider of gravel and dirt hauling and custom excavating services. 29 years of diverse experience, including in-ground pools, commercial snow removal, basements, land clearing, and site work. For Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating, no job is too big or too small. You can reach Bill at either 812-256-2406 or 502-930-2408. Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating. Welcome back to the Pirate Football Preseason Show, our special edition of the weekly pregame conversation known as Talk with Hawk with Charlestown head coach Jason Hawkins. How you doing tonight, coach? I'm doing real good. I'm real excited about uh, getting started tonight and seeing what we look like. Power fans, tonight's preseason show centers around the upcoming 2011 Pirate football season. We're going to include a recap of the 2010 season. We're going to take a look at the personnel of the 2011 Pirate football team. Take a look at the preseason progress, as well as a review of the possible challenges of winning this, the 15th Mid-Southern Conference title and fourth sectional crown for the Charlestown Pirates. We'll also discuss the 2011 Mid-Southern Conference football race as a whole. Who to watch, what team may be the favorite, and who might be the surprise spoiler for the title. The 2011 football season brings many twists to talk about from a newly formatted regular season schedule to the addition of Silver Creek and the MSC football field to come to new opponent, head coaches, sectional configuration. So there's plenty to discuss and talk about and speculate on this year's season. But before we get started, we want to remind Pirate Nation that for the fourth consecutive year, Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting will bring you every second of the upcoming 2011 Charlestown High School football season. New to the crew this year is my partner here at the table, Brian Keith. He will uh, he'll be taking the place of uh, my longtime partner, Michael Grayson, and uh, he'll join my play-by-play -play efforts with a little different format this year. I'll be doing the play-by-play, -play and Brian will be bringing the, uh, the color commentary analysis and his viewpoint uh, from that perspective. Uh, he's a Pirate football alumni, and welcome aboard, Brian. Glad Looking to be here. A good time. And then uh, we'll also be joined by the glove. Brian Glover, another Pirate football alumnus, returns for another season of keeping us informed from the Charlestown sideline. While Chuck Better returns as the production controls and the brains of the operation here at Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting, Adam Tolliver is back to manage game stats for us. This year we are working on not only broadcasting on the internet as in the past, but also on a local FM radio feed, which much more to be announced about that from uh, Chuck and and uh, the control room. For all the details and developments, keep an eye at Charlestown Pirate Pride's website at www.charlestownpiratepride.com. Definitely, but there's one more item we definitely don't want to forget about, and that's we want to remember our sponsors. Uh, Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting uh, sponsors. The vast majority have been with us since the beginning, so we definitely are proud of them and glad to have them back. We definitely want to thank our uh, anchor sponsor this year again, and that's uh, Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating. So thanks to Bill and, and his family, you know, kicking in on that. We appreciate that. Pre- and post-game sponsor is uh, Grayson Funeral Homes from here in town. Uh, Chris and his crew have always been uh, very dedicated to Pirate Sports. We appreciate them. The scoreboard sponsor will be uh, Dale Robinson State Farm Agency. The halftime show sponsor will be the Charlestown Pizza Company and those folks. 
And the player of the game sponsor again this year will be Tubletown Gym. A new sponsor joining us this year is going to be the Park Street Body Shop. Park Street Body Shop this year is going to be sponsoring the hit of the week during the football broadcast this year. That should be exciting, Brian, that new new segment of hit of the week sponsored by uh, Park Street Body Shop. And uh, our buddy the Glove is going to be down on the field hearing all the popping and banging. So it will be a lot of fun for him to do. Well, Pirate Nation, let's get things rolling with tonight's football preseason sale. Let's start with a general overview of the 2011 Pirate football team. Coach, uh, we had some losses from last season, some guys that really were uh, integral parts in what was another very successful campaign for you. Uh, talk about some of the guys we've lost and uh, what that's going to mean to us. Obviously a lot, but what that's going to mean to us. Well, uh, right now we lost either nine and at times the ten starters on defense uh, from last season's eight and four team. Uh, we lost all of our defensive line, which uh, we all remember uh, Harley Rodriguez was all state, and Ethan Bowen was the other defensive end that was really what good. And then we lost John Slayton, a defensive tackle. And I, he, if he didn't lead us in tackles, he was pretty close to leading us in tackles. At linebacker, we lost both of our starting linebackers in Matt Hall and Jake Dent. And then also in the secondary, we lost uh, DJ Myers and Ben McDaniel. Um, and I think there was somebody else that played last year that we lost too in the senior class. Yeah, uh, Williams. Um, wasn't he a senior last year? No, that might have been two years ago. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. I know we lost nine to ten starters on defense. So offensively, we lost our deep threat and Josh King. We don't. Uh, we haven't really found anybody to replace him yet with the speed that he uh, possessed. And uh, but we have. We do have a lot of uh, key players and a lot of positions coming back on offense. So. Well, you know, you talk about Josh King, and, and, you know, we talked for a long time about John Slate, and every coach noticed Big John, how tough he was in there. Harley Rodriguez, he, he made things happen. You know, just, just a, a talented group of seniors. And when you look across this year, as we talk about the returning personnel, not a whole lot of 12s in the class uh, class line there. A lot of sophomores, juniors going to be stepping up to play, Coach. So why don't you take us through uh, some of the key returners on defense? Uh, well, I'm not really sure we have any key returners, but we <laughs> we do have uh, we do have some guys that are really stepping up and looking good so far. Um, our defense has probably been one of the bright spots that we've had in the few weeks that we have had practice. We're going to be the one thing that uh, I can sit here and say and feel real comfortable about saying is we're going to be really fast on defense. Uh, we have a lot of kids up front that are really quick, and uh, they're they're really causing a problem for us uh, for our first team on offense right now, and and. I'm pretty sure that they're going to cause a little problems for everybody that we play against in the conference and anybody, you know, our size. Um, uh, we have um, Harper, Jake Harper, a defensive end, and he'll be accompanied by um, – Seth McCutcheon, which he was a linebacker last year, and he's going to get to play some defensive end this year. So you got those two at defensive end, and I'm they both probably run under a five flat forty, so that's pretty quick. And then a defensive tackle, we got a newcomer and um, Jimmy Garcia, and uh, he he's real fast, and he's he's going to really cause some problems for centers and guards uh, of opponents. So the defensive line is going to be uh, it's going to be pretty exciting to watch. Uh, anybody that we feel is going to pass the ball is going to have to get off the passes pretty quick, or they're going to be in their face. So, coach, as I talked to Coach Bradford, uh, he, he is real excited, just like you talked about having the amount of speed that he's got on this year's team. And I guess the way I would sum it up from from what I've been able to see is there's a lot of talent there. It's just young talent, um, and I think as even like Coach Calipari would say, he'll take talent over experience any day of the week. Is that kind of your feeling on where we're at with the defense this year? Yeah, I think they're going to they're, they're grow up real quick. And the, the good thing about our kids is uh, – they don't know that they're not experienced. You can't really explain that to them. They don't know that feeling of not – you can't look at one of those kids and say, you're not experienced because he's going to look he at you like you're, you're the idiot now. Yeah. You're making the wrong choice. So yeah. I've been playing football all my life, yeah, Coach. Our, our kids don't – they don't really look into that. They don't – that don't really bother them. And, uh, you know, they just want to get to the game and play football. So our defense will be, I think – if I had to say what's going to be the uh, thing that's going to impress most people and uh, take people by surprise so far, it's going to be how fast our defense is. Uh, uh, go ahead, bud. I'm sorry about that, Brian. We'll get we'll get this right. I promise you. We'll I'll quit stepping on you. You go right ahead, please. You know you talked you talked about uh, some of the things on the defense on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you got a lot more coming back there for sure. You know what part do you feel like solidified and you feel pretty comfortable with going into this part of the season? Well, if we just stay healthy, 
Uh, last year, you know, we were last year we were doing pretty well, and then we started having injuries, and we lost a couple games that I thought we might have could have won if we had our whole team. And then when we got everybody healthy again, we started winning again. Uh, we have to stay healthy. I feel like we have one of the best uh, one-two punches in Southern Indiana in the quarterback and tailback that we have with uh, Aaron Daniel and Tyler Odell. And if uh, they can stay healthy and can stay on the field, you know, there a lot of people are going to have a lot of troubles uh, stopping both of them. You know, you, met, you mentioned where you're at with tailback, and obviously Tyler Odles looked very impressive in the preseason. Do, do you see Seth McCutcheon getting a chance to run the ball over there as well, or do you think he'll pretty much stick to the defensive side of the ball? Um, well, him and Darren Taylor and also even uh, Ryan Miles. Ryan Miles is back out. We didn't really talk about him on defense, but he's starting a safety force right now. And uh, he's been running the ball very well. So we have, with him and Darren and Seth, one of them might be able to step in and get some reps. But when you got Tyler in the game, you got uh, – we're, you know, we can do a lot of different things and put Tyler in a lot of different spots. He's kind of like a, I don't really want to compare him to Reggie Bush, but he's being <laughs> able to move around like Reggie Bush does when he's in the game. Yep. So. yep. I bet he would have really appreciated dating Kim Kardashian, though, if you did compare him to Reggie Bush. So there's not there's some good things that go along with that. <laughs> Bud, you want to talk about as as far as uh, some of the things that they lost on offense? I mean, I know you t you talked about Josh King, and but there's quite a bit of stuff over there that they lost. But like we talked about, there's a lot of things coming back too. Well, you know, obviously Josh King being the big thing. When you have that deep threat, you know, coach, you'd yep. love to have that back. But, you know, what we saw at the end of last season, some of the guys we have coming back, uh, Sexton and some of these guys, really stepped, maybe not the blazing speed or not the blazing speed of a Josh King, but very precise, route runners, open. We saw a lot of that. So how confident are you in the passing game with what we got coming back, Well, we back, got coach? right now with the passing game, and the, the first thing is the play receiver at Charlestown, you're going to have to be able to block. And that's the one thing that we're preaching right now because we all, we all know we're going to, even though we're in shotgun and we're spreading the field out, we're going to be a run first team. And uh, if they, those guys that we got over there, which is going to be Grage Bradford, uh, Cody Donahue, uh, Wesley, and then um, Justin Conrad is, gonna, is a new player that we haven't seen, and he's about 6'4". Um, so he's, he, he looks good out there. Um, so when we look at those four guys, man, it's a good group. They block very well. They all got very good hands. So if they get the ball thrown to them, you know, they, they know they not, might not get as many opportunities. Uh, so when it's their time to catch the ball, they've all been doing a very good job catching the ball. So I, I'm real impressed about how they look. Uh, the, the Donahue, Donahue was hurt most of last season, and uh, he's came back, and he's, he's really changed. He's really uh, has done a number with me, and I've really been impressed with him. Well, that's good stuff. How about uh, how about that line? You know, we lost some folks out of there, and we all know that football starts on the offensive side in the offensive line. So what are we looking like there? Well, we uh, we have a couple guys. I think we have three starters back with um, Leighton Brewer at guard. Uh, we moved Steven Johnson from guard to tackle, and then we got Cole Noakes at left tackle. Uh, those three started the last six games for us when we uh, we went five and one. So, you know, that's pretty good to have those three back. We did move uh, Alec Wakefield. Right now he's at guard. We moved him from defense to offense. And, uh, you know, he's... 6'3", 6'4", 250, 260. So he, he looks like a man over there. Uh, and then the newcomer we got is uh, Mr. Key's son. He'll be our freshman starting center. And uh, it's kind of funny with him because, you know, we're in shotgun and we've been in shotgun all summer. And uh, with him as my center, you know, I, I don't even really notice – you know, like I, I forget how that he's a freshman, and because we don't have no bad snaps, and then all of a sudden we might have a bad snap, like one every two weeks, and I'm like, man, that's been a long time since we had a bad snap. And uh, I don't, I look at um, Austin as uh, he's going to be really good. Now, he, you know, he might take like Brian always says, well, he hasn't went against anybody in front of him yet, and I, I agree with that. But I, the one thing I like about Austin is I can tell Austin something one time, and he can tell me what I told him a week later. And uh, he's always going to try to improve, and he's always going to try to be uh, the best he can. And with, with him at center, you know, like the other day we had uh, – just one more thing on Austin. The other day we had a problem where one of our guards, our backup guard, didn't know where to go. And I said, Austin, you got, you got to make sure he knows where to go. And he goes, I know. I told him he just didn't listen to me. I said, well, I'm sorry that, I'm sorry that it goes like that, but I'm, <laughs> you just got to tell him where to go. So he knows what's going on, and he, I, I look for big things from Austin. And, Coach, uh, that's great points. And as much as I'd like to take credit for some of that, he definitely takes after his mother. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know she's probably one of our biggest fans. So uh, yep. she likes football just as much or even more than you do. So I know that's a 
you know, you know, you you talked about some of the, you know, at least one freshman there, but you're getting a group of freshmen this year, and I guess the way I summed up some of those kids, and I, I coached them in Little League, I thought there was a lot of solid players in, in that class. I didn't see superstars, but I saw a lot of kids that I felt like could be productive once they got here. Kind of talk about that class. You know, they were pretty successful, 7th and 8th graders, and, you know, they're coming off three or four Clark Bowls, which, you know, we've been successful at the middle school level, which a lot of that credit goes to you as well. But talk about the, the class in general, maybe some of the other players that you see out of that class. Well, the one thing good about that, the some of them need to realize that, you know, this ain't middle school no more. It's a lot different now in high school that, you know, you got to come to practice every day. You got And they're, they're still adjusting. Like, we got a couple kids that uh, don't really realize, you know, what the difference of middle school to high school, and they might still be a little nervous at times. But uh, we do have a lot that are really stepping up. Uh, Jason Houchins has been getting reps at corner on, on the defensive side of the ball in varsity, and he's been doing a very good job all summer playing corner. Uh, Cameron Hobson is going to be a speedster for us. He's got a lot of speed. Uh, Tyler Olsen at tailback has been looking pretty good. Brian Haynes has been looking good at running back and playing uh, safety. He's been all over the field making plays for us. And um, Hunter's, Hunter uh, Connor, uh, Crace has been looking good playing line with uh, Kyle Ritchie and Cody Johnson. So, you know, Jacob Willer's playing good at linebacker. we got a lot of kids in that grade that have, in a couple years, you know, they're going to be pretty good players. Yeah, it looks like the, the future is pretty solid, that's for sure. Well, you know, the upcoming class coming up, I know that uh, I know the glove wants to talk a little bit more with you about some of that in a little bit. But as you look at the team, Coach, you know, just kind of to wrap up this segment, you talked about some of the strengths you have and, and some of the things you really like seeing. How about some areas of concern? If, if you had to pick a couple of things that you really are focusing the work on right now, what would you pick? Well, we're pretty, you know, like I said, we're real fast up front. Uh, we really haven't seen a team, and I guess we will next Friday night with Floyd Central. We haven't really seen uh, anybody run the ball right at us. Jeff tried a little bit in the scrimmage, and Seymour tried a little bit, and we did a pretty good job with that. But, you know, on a Friday night on, under lights, and you got a team that is, is uh, dedicated to, you know, run the ball down your throats, and you have to stop it, uh, that's going to be a concern that we have probably uh, right from the start. Uh, offensively, we're just going to be uh, offensive line. Uh, it's a group that hasn't – they're starting to mesh. They haven't fully meshed yet. Uh, there's going to be times where, uh, you know, we're going to have to look at them and say, look, we're getting ready to run the ball 20 straight times. We're, here we go. Yeah. And, we're gonna, and they're going to have to take that row and say, all right, let's go. And, uh, you know, those two things are uh, – I think it's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And uh, it might take a couple more weeks. But I, we're getting better every week, and that's all you can ask for right now. How about, uh, <clears throat> real quickly, how about special teams? How are we looking on special teams? We, we struggled a little bit with that special be, teams. That could be another struggle. That could be a big concern. We uh, we do not have Aaron Daniels, the kicker, and uh, I wish he didn't have to kick. We don't really have, uh, if anybody's listening and you're a kicker, uh, <laughs> come, come see me ASAP. Chuck Ledbetter's got his hand up. We coach. need. Uh, I, I, don't, I think he used we, up his eligibility. We though. will take all comers. If uh, anybody has a dog that hits it good with their nose, they, somebody asked me a couple years ago when <laughs> was the kicker. Would you let a dog try out? I said, if they can kick it through the upright, anybody can play. Uh, so we need, yeah, that's one of the uh, concerns. I feel good with the return game, and I feel good with the punt. Aaron Daniel being the punter, and he averages probably over 35 yards punting. So uh, there we're good. The kickoff might be a challenge, and uh, like I said, we're still looking into that. Well, you know, as as we talked about, had some losses, got some great young people, and got some uh, some real high expectations for the season. So we're going to take a break right now. Uh, when we get come back, we'll move on to uh, the next portion of our pre third annual preseason Charlestown Pirate Football Show, brought to you right here on Charlestown Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting. <laughs> Let State Farm Agent Dale Robinson handle all the moving parts to your insurance. Whether it's for auto, home, life, or financial services, Dale is there with more ways to help and more ways to save. Call or visit Dale today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. At New Washington State Bank, everything we do is for you. We're a vital part of Charlestown and surrounding communities. In business for more than 100 years, we offer a full range of banking products and services. Consumer and business checking, savings accounts, certificates of deposit, home and auto loans. Whatever your banking needs, we can help you. 
We have eight locations overall, with two in Charlestown. Part of what makes banking at New Washington State Bank so great is the customer service you receive from people who live right here in our community. You'll recognize them as your neighbors and friends. They're committed to making your experience as smooth and rewarding as possible. We also have a freshly redesigned online presence at newwashbank.com. There, in addition to providing access to your account information and online financial planning tools, you'll find a community spotlight focusing on local businesses and recognizing exemplary employee service. We also offer free mobile banking and bill pay banking. Remember, at New Washington State Bank, everything we do is for you. Welcome back. We're still here with uh, my new partner, Brian Keith, and Coach Jason Hawkins. And, Coach, right now we're going to kind of walk through the season, look at it game by game, uh, kind of throw it out there. Brian will do some follow-up with you just to get your thoughts. And, obviously, we open up August 19th with Madison, second-year coach Fish, looking for his first victory. What do you expect to see from Madison? Well, I expect his son to get the ball probably about 30 to 35 times. And uh, he's a real fast running back, which, you know, anytime you got somebody fast that you're handing the ball to a lot that could cause some problems um they got some good linemen coming back and I, i've heard that their their freshman class coming in is one of the better classes they've ever had so they uh they'll be hungry too when you know anytime you go 0 and 10 and you're looking to get to the new season you're looking to get to that first game and uh you know uh usually even though they went 0 and 10 last year they were they're fired up in that first game is uh you know they're ready to play football and try to get a win so uh they're always fired up to play us week one and uh, we're gonna have to be ready to go to you know i thought gage bradford had a very interesting uh thought process as far as looking at Madison he really feels like that's going to be one of our more competitive games and if you remember uh, you know the, the fish kid really put a hurting on us on some screen games and that kind of stuff and the kid really broke a lot of tackles and you know it was interesting to talk to some of the kids at practice and they really are focusing on Madison I, there's no way that they're looking past them and to anybody else but they really put a lot of thought into to what they're looking at with that team and I think there's concern out there and I think there's reason to, to be there because there, there's definitely some talent there and just like you said with them being so so hungry I, I think we're gonna have our hands full there all right after uh, after Madison then we uh, head to our our annual early season shootout at Brownstown you know they were 11 and 2 last year Reed May is 140 years old he's been coaching since uh, the Civil War I think up there it seems like but uh, this really has become an exciting exciting football game I mean all of your years here that game has been kind of the the pivotal one and you know he finally got you last year it took him took him four tries before the Hall of Famer could get you but you know we don't have to ask how good they'll be we just have to know how they reloaded that thing because they're always tough. What are you looking for from the Braves, Coach? Well, their quarterback's back, and they got a real fast receiver and a, a fast slot back. Um, I've heard, you know, through the grapevine that they went somewhere and won a lineman competition and also won a seven-on-seven. Seven. So, you know, when you got uh, – at Brownstown, they run the same offense all the way up from fourth grade all the way up to the high school. So you know the kids are going to know what they're doing uh, coming in. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to make any mistakes. They're not going to beat themselves either. Uh, we're going to go out and we're going to be better than them, or they're going to beat us. And uh, uh, you got to look forward to coaching against a hall somebody that you know is going to go in the Hall of Fame, and uh, he'll have them ready. And uh, I think it really irritated him that we won the first three years, which you know kind of made me happy. But <laughs> I think uh, they were they were ready to go last year, and they had a good football team last year they ended up going 11 and 2 so we're not the only team that they picked on uh, so you know I think our kids will be fired up and ready to go after what they did to us last year. Coach they're definitely unique in, in what they do in their offensive backfield with, with all the, the, hand, the handoffs and the fake handoffs and the misdirection I, to my knowledge I don't think we play anybody that comes to my mind that does as mis, much misdirection and those type of things as Browntown, Brownstown does. Is there anything you can do to prepare your team for that or you think you just go into it just like it's another game and well, we, you definitely cannot go into it like it's another game because you know you uh, you sometimes you teach your kids to run the ball because some teams hand it off right and follow the fullback every time and you know you can run to where the fullback is. You run to where the fullback goes with Brownstown, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've been working on it. We started last week, uh, you know, having sections in our practice where we were running double wing towards the defense where they could get ready and see what was going on and uh, kind of get ready for some of that misdirection and crisscross type of stuff. But it, you you just got to have a, a you know a smart defense and a, a, a disciplined defense where they don't just take off and run they stay and play their positions yeah 
Well, that'll be a, that'll be an exciting game, no question. In the third game, we come home on September 2nd for uh, Coach Steve Cooley and Clarksville. Uh, that's always a game you, you you don't ever have any trouble getting up for that game and getting your mm -hmm. team ready. What what are you looking for from the generals? Well, they're going they're going to throw the ball. They've uh, we've played them in seven on seven a couple times this summer, and uh, they. Um, they might be a little down on offensive linemen, but he's got a pretty good quarterback and some skilled receivers. And uh, they're, I don't, when I say they're going to throw it 50 times, don't, don't, don't look surprised when they throw it 55. So they're, <laughs> they're definitely going to throw the ball, and that'll be a challenge for our secondary because you know we don't see a lot of people that do that. So uh, they'll be, it'll be an interesting game. Uh, our kids will be, you know, that's one of our biggest rivals, and we'll be ready to play. But yeah, I think Clarksville will be a little better. You know, in my opinion, I know we talked about Brownstown's quarterback being back, but in, in my opinion, the, the race for the Mid-Southern Conference quarterback is going to be between our own Aaron Daniel and Wes Rittman. I really think he's that good of a quarterback. He threw for about 275 yards against us last year, if I'm not mistaken. And was it that much? Yeah, he, I hate to inform you that, but I, yeah, I uh, think it was up close to 300. Yeah, I think it was 273, right. Coach. It yeah. wasn't quite as bad as you yeah. saying. Yeah, but. I was off by a few yards there. But <laughs> obviously, he's got a great arm. You know, they're running a lot of crossing patterns. Uh, some of the things that I feel comfortable with this year from what, what I see is we're so fast up front. I don't think they'll have the time, kind of time to throw the ball like they would no. like to against us, but definitely they have a very talented quarterback and, and one of the better ones that they've had in a while there. All right. After the generals, you know, this is where the schedule starts to move around a little bit with the new addition and stuff, but we uh, we go to North Harrison on September 9th with a new coach, Greg Burton. Uh, they have some veterans back at North Harrison. What, what do you think of them? Uh, that's that's going to be a good question, Mark. I have really no idea. Uh, I know he's talked to Brian Gleason. I've heard a couple times about different stuff that Brian does, so I'm not sure if they'll try to run that type of offense or what they'll – I know they will probably won't try to do what they've done in the past. So, really, that's kind of a question, Mark. I don't think they have a, a, a quarterback that the, they could spread the field and, you know, try to do some things that way. So, I do think it will be some type of a running game type of offense. But um, I don't know how many kids they got coming back, but um, – you know, it'd be in, that, that will be an interesting game just to see what what happens the first couple of weeks. Coach, whenever you play a team with, with a, a new coach that you really don't have a lot of insight on, do you spend a lot of time that week really focusing on your own team? You, you really can't prepare for exactly what they're going to throw at you because it's kind of an unknown. Do you spend more time maybe that week saying, let's take a look at us and let's spend this week to maybe sharpen our skills? Yeah, well, um, we do do that. I mean, but we'll have, let's see, that we'll have three games. So I know I'll have at a minimum two tapes on them. Um, I don't know who they play those games, but we'll take a look at the tapes now and, and see, you know, what they kind of do. But it, if it's something that we've seen, uh, it, that is a good chance for us to uh, try to maybe get better at some of the stuff that we're doing wrong. All right. Then we, uh, we stay on the road on September 16th, and we begin a new rivalry with our uh, – with our buddies from Silver Creek. It'll be their first year of varsity competition, and uh, they're going to be looking to get up and running, and nothing they'd like better than to give you a, a run for your money. What what's, uh, what do you see from Silver Creek, and what are the dangers with those new programs like that, Coach? Well, you know, the kids are hungry to play. They haven't played a game in, uh, you know, 30, 40-something years. So, you know, the kids that are out there are really excited about uh, playing football, and uh, they want to be out there, and, you know, you could – that coach probably could have told them that, look, we're going to run five miles every day, and those kids wouldn't have known any different. They'd have been like, okay, that's just part of football practice. Uh, so they're excited to play, and they're excited to have a team. And, uh, you know, from what I've heard, the town, most of the town is pretty excited about uh, what's uh, having a team and ready to go. Um, but, you know, I mean, looking back at when Pekin started, uh, it's tough. It's tough starting out. And uh, that first year, uh, you can have a pretty good team. And, uh, you know, you can end up going 3-7, three 3-8. Three or eight. So uh, um, it will be interesting to see how Silver Creek does. I mean, it's going to be, uh, you know, everybody, it's going to be an instant rivalry for us. Um, sure. Um, yeah. You know, that's one of the biggest rivalries we got in basketball. And uh, I think our town uh, – likes to watch our teams play their teams in any, every sport. So it won't be no different in football. And uh, it would be an uh, exciting thing to start. I mean, they're only five minutes away, and that's, you know, battle of 403 is what we'll probably call it, and <laughs> hopefully we'll win that. Yeah, I think you just touched on it. The proximity, if nothing else, is a natural rivalry. And, and when you take people that lived on, you know, that part of 403 and they're going to be neighbors with some of the kids that go to that school, you, you both touched on it. That's a natural rivalry that should fire its ugly head probably the very first time we play. 
All right. Well, we'll come home on September 23rd and take on Salem with their new coach, Mo Moriarty. 241 wins, 56 losses in 26 years. Plethora of experience taking over at Salem. What's that going to be like, Coach? Well, that'll be interesting. You're, uh, now we've, uh, I think we've played against three Hall of Fame coaches, so now <laughs> we'll go against number four. So, yeah. uh, you know, that'll be a, a fun week for me and the coaching staff to be able to go against somebody with his uh, nature that's coached college football that's been a, a big time it's one state championships, two different places that, you know, he, you, you say Indiana football, and he's going to be in the first three sentences that you say when you talk about it. So, uh, you know, for our, for me and this coaching staff, that's going to be a fun week to be able to play against uh, Mo, and uh, you know, we look forward to that because they will be they will be well coached. They uh, they might not have as much talent as maybe some of the other teams, but you can promise you one thing: Mo will coach them up, and they will be as good as whatever they can be. You know, and I don't want to overstate the, the importance of, of a head coach like that, but I know you and I happened to talk during basketball season when, whenever it wasn't official that uh, Mo Moriarty was even going to be at Salem. And I'll be honest, I, I really didn't think they had a chance to get him. I thought it was kind of a joke. That it was kind of a rumor that got out there. When, when you bring in somebody with that much experience that Bud alluded to and you win 241 games in the state and a definite Hall of Famer, I, I guess I just didn't think somebody like that would be coming to either Salem or the Mid-Southern Conference for that matter. But he's here. Uh, we've got a couple of Hall of Fame coaches in the league, you have a potential to be that kind of coach. D does that just add to the uh, mystique of the league? Do you think it's just gotten better? Uh, I would think we've taken a step up as, as far as the overall coaching staffs in this in this league. Oh yeah, definitely. With uh, when you get to add a guy like Mo Mariotti, uh, uh, like I was telling Cooley uh, this summer, or when Mo got hired, I said I just went from being the uh, third or fourth best coach to now being the fifth. So in the league, <laughs> uh, you know, when you hire a guy like that, he automatically goes up to the top, if not uh, behind Reed. So uh, you know, it's every week. Every week you're gonna when you get coach like Mo and Reed and Cooley, you know, every week you're going to have to have your team prepared. If not, they're going to. So, Well, we all know how important a head coaching move can be. I mean, we all saw that four seasons ago when you came here, Coach, and we'd been on the ropes for a long time. You came in, same kids, you know, talented kids, you know, and don't take anything away from them, but getting them doing the right things, looking the right way, doing the, you know, doing everything the way it should be. Ten wins later, you know, we're still playing in the sectional and, and huge things. So, the head coach is a very important spot, especially in football, in my opinion. It and it's uh, it adds another kink to us having him in this conference. So it'll be interesting to see. All right, then on September 30th, we'll stay home and we'll play Corridan. Uh, he's got the Wendell Twins returning and uh, lost a lot of skilled people. So what do you expect? I don't know. I wouldn't say he lost a lot. He only lost the, the, the best player in the in well, Southern Indiana. Well, and <laughs> uh, other than that, not, not much. You uh, know? That's, that's your opinion. I can name a couple I thought was better than him. But uh, they lost a good. They lost a great football player that did a lot of things for him on offense and defense. And uh, I, you would have to probably say that last year he was the uh, face of the of Corden. If they, you know, you'd see his pitcher probably first if they had. Uh, they wanted to put somebody out there. Um, but they got a lot coming back. They got almost all offensive linemen and defensive linemen coming back. They probably have eight, eight to nine stars on defense back. And they, uh, you know, they got the quarterback and the window, the twins back. So they're going to be, you know, this is the year that the Darren's talked about for a long time, uh, saying this is going to be a great year. Now, after this year, then it's going to be interesting to see how well they do. But this is the year they've been waiting on. You know, we, we talked about what they did lose. But I'll tell you what, I thought defensively last year they matched up as well with us as far as the scheme wise as anybody we played the entire year and obviously we've changed things offensively since then but I, I thought earlier in the season when we played them last year they definitely kind of took it to us on the defensive side of the ball yeah well we got to remember too uh not taking anything away from Corden but I was down to my third fourth and fifth string tailbacks right. um, I would have loved to play Corden with uh Odo or uh uh, big muscle head, what a uh, prior in the backfield, uh, <laughs> big muscle boy. Uh, I would, I wish, uh, if I could have had either one of them guys in the backfield against Corden, I think that game would have been a little different. I mean, we had chances. It, you know, if you remember the game, the uh, right. the punt went over Dunaway's head right. for 25 yards, and, and we couldn't, we get, couldn't get there. Right. And uh, if we'd have got that ball, we could have think. Could've I been think a different could, game. Could have been definitely a different game. No and doubt about so, it. So, uh, you know, they they got us. I think it was 23-12 or something like that. But well, you know, we were in the game and we had chances. And if we would have our whole team, I would have loved to play them again in the section. That's a great point. Well, yeah, and, and you beat me to it because we were a little depleted. But All right, then we move on. 
On October 7th, we go and uh, and play at Providence with their new coach for the first time in 100 years also. They're, they're going to be playing for Larry Dennison this year. Not many starters returning, but, you know, there is tradition there. What do you see at Providence? Well, they're going to be – I think they'll be pretty good. Now, their record might not show it because if, if, if you have ever seen their schedule, uh, they play Jeff, New Albany, Providence, New Albany Floyd, Indian Creek, Evansville Bossy, Evansville Central, uh, Holy, a good Holy Cross team in Louisville, us. Uh, you know, they, they keep going on. And on and on. So you know they could be two and eight and have a good year, have a good team. Um, they, their JV team was real strong last year. Probably one of the better JV teams I've seen in a long time. So they got a lot of kids coming. Uh, they're going to run a totally different offense. I've heard they're going to run the pistol offense, and then they're going to run a new defense. So they're going to uh, the Jason Mullis actually the. North Harrison ex coach is uh, the defense coordinator at Providence. So, uh, and he, you know, the one thing I will say about Jason is that he always had his team ready to go and always had a good defense. So, yeah. I think I think Providence, uh, by you know, and they have seven weeks to uh, get something going before they play us. So, yeah. I, I think that'll be that's always going to be a tough out for us. Um, we're always going to be able to compete with them, but it's just it's some in the last four years it, it's a tough game for us to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think you just said it. I mean, I know Coach Sartini isn't there anymore, but I think Providence is always going to be known for one thing, and that's discipline. So they're, they're not going to beat theirself. If you are going to beat them, you're going to have to do it, you know go out and do it on your own. They're not going to beat theirself. So I, I don't think that that part's going to change of their game and their attitude. So you just said it. They're never going to be an easy out, but we're always going to be competitive. Well, you know, and you know if yeah. Providence is a team that if I if we could say when my career is over that I went 500 against Providence, not many coaches uh, at our size school can say that. It's uh, true. Uh, we we won the first year pretty easy. The second year they came back and beat us pretty easy. And then the uh, third year they beat us by seven. Aaron got hurt, went out for the whole game, you know, in the first quarter. And we had some chances, you know, to take opportunities that we didn't take. That game could have went either way. Right. And then last year we were up uh, two times with the ball inside the 50 and, and, and coughed it up. So right. uh, either one of those you can look and say, okay, we should be two and two against Providence in my four years. So Sure, uh, a couple of uh, and, uh, fumbles last year you know, definitely hurt us. So we uh, we're, we need to definitely uh, not uh, talk about not making mistakes the week we play Providence because if we don't, I think we can have a chance to win a game. All right, and then we'll end up the regular season at home on October 14th against Coach Davilo and the Eastern team. Uh, Trey Albertson, nice player last year, one of their top returners. What what do you see from Eastern? Uh, they lost a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of seniors. But when you talk to the Coach Davilo, he acts like this is could be a very good team for Pekin. Um, they're going to be well coached. He does a good job. They always hit very well. They always play very good defense, uh, pretty disciplined. So, you know, I, I don't really like playing them week nine because, um, you know, they're a tough team, and you don't really want to play one of your tougher teams uh, hitting-wise, you know, the week before you play sectional. Um, and you don't want to play a team that you might overlook looking into sectional either. Uh, but uh, that could be a very good game, and if they're as good as what Coach Dabble says, it could be a tough game. You know, looking back at some of the stats from last year, they really had a really pr prolific offense against us. And I don't remember exactly how many points they scored. I think it was upwards maybe to around 30 points mm -hmm. they scored against us. So, you know, obviously what they had on offense, at least their scheme alone, has proved to be successful. So we'll see what they have coming back, but they, they definitely have had some, some players there that can put some hurting on some guys. All right, Coach, we've ran through the schedule. we talked about the teams. Who's going to win the MSC? I would have to say it had to be out of uh, my top the three teams that I would go with. Uh, I'd have to put Cord and Brownstown uh, a little bit above us at, at right now. Uh, hopefully that will change within a couple of weeks. Um, you know, definitely with us going to Brownstown in week two, uh, talk to me after the game and I'll let you know if it changed. Uh, but I'd have to say I'd have to put Corden and Brownstown with what they got coming up. Corden because they got a lot of returners. Uh, Brownstown because it's Brownstown they got Coach May. So uh, those two are the top two. And then you have to look to probably us and uh, um, everybody else. I think it's just going to be a dogfight. And uh, anybody, else, anybody I think could end up from fourth to eighth. All right. Well, Coach. You're uh, beginning your fifth season here after four years, 32 wins, 12 losses, three MSC titles. Uh, you've done it all basically here besides win a sectional. be nice to get one of those on that. we got, we got to add that on to next year's show. No pressure, but next year we want to make sure one sectional title is here. And we'll talk a little bit more about the section a little bit. But w what are your thoughts heading into your fifth season, kind of reflecting back and looking at what's coming up this year? What are your thoughts right now? Uh, I mean, I, if you would have told me that we were going to be 32 and 12 and average eight wins when I took the job, uh, 
we would have had probably a couple of drinks and laughed uh, laughed the night away. <laughs> um, I never would have. I, I I just not because I didn't know what oh what Charles what Charles did. That would have been a that would probably been a that would have been a dream for me to to be able to say you're you're getting a which uh, a lot of people don't understand this. In the last four years, we've been more successful than any team in Clark or Floyd County. Uh, in the four years, we've we've had a pretty good run so far, and if we can continue on that, we are uh, getting Charlestown football back to where it was in the '80s, and of course that's where uh, we all want to be. And uh, I think everything's going in the right direction. I think we're going to be really good. Uh, we could be really good this year, and we of course we're very young, so we could be really good again next year. So for the next couple years on this, we're we're going to be pretty excited and smiling, and, and hopefully having a good old time. Yeah, you, you touched on it. I, th I think what, what you and your staff, and I, I don't want to forget about your, your assistant coaches, and we'll talk about those later, um, but what you all have done is brought excitement back to Charlestown. It, it's We've talked about this a lot in the offseason. Charlestown is a football school. It's a football town. Uh, and I think you all, what you've done is bring excitement back. And you can look at the stands even here tonight. You know, we're talking about pretty much a, a practice, but yet there's a lot of people in the stands here to watch. There's a lot of talk in the offseason. And what you all have brought is, is the excitement back that that we've craved uh, for so many years and we definitely i know the town and community really appreciate you and your staff for everything you all have done you well, know, i'm happy to be here well i've talked about it before but you know before you came and work in the sideline I, I can remember when my old partner michael grace and i would count 30 people in the stands for for a football game i mean you look up there now i don't want to exaggerate but but you know there's a better part of 100 people maybe a little bit more here to watch you guys just scrimmage tonight coach and i think that that speaks volume so uh my comment on the state of the program, you say maybe we'll be back to where we were in the 80s. Well, I wasn't here in the 80s, but I'll take where we're at right now. With the effort you get out of those kids and, and the way that you and your staff has adapted to injuries and everything else that goes on here, uh, I would beg to differ that we'll be back. I would say we are back, and uh, we are someone to be reckoned with. And that, that all goes to you and, and the young men who play for in your staff. So great stuff. So we, we need to take a break right now, Pirate Nation. So we're going to uh, we're going to take uh, let our sponsors talk for a little bit and then we'll be back to uh, finish up our segments with coach Hawkins here so he can get out and do the scrimmage you're uh, listening and viewing the uh, annual blue white scrimmage here at Dutch Reese Stadium at Charlestown High School founded in 1949 the Grayson funeral home has served the needs of Charlestown the Grayson family continues to provide important services such as funerals monuments vaults and cremations from locations in Charlestown, New Washington, and throughout southeastern Indiana. We're proud of our Charlestown heritage, and we believe in making our city a better place to live, work, and play. Our civic pride shines through in our support of community organizations like the Lions Club, the Charlestown Pirate Pride Athletic Booster Club, local churches, and youth activities. We also participate in the Mayor's Vision Team, determining the direction of the future of Charlestown. And we care for the Charlestown Cemetery, ensuring that the memories of our loved ones are properly honored. Generations of Pride is the city of Charlestown slogan. Four generations of Graysons have served Charlestown and New Washington over the years and will be here for years to come. Interested in tumbling and cheer classes? Tumbletown, located at 250 Harrison Street in Charlestown, is the gym for kids two and a half years and up. Classes are available weeknights in both private and semi-private classes. Tumbletown, combined with Indiana United of Sellersburg as United All-Stars, also offers competitive cheerleading for many and youth levels through junior and senior levels of national and local competition. Tumbletown is a proud Pirate Athletic supporter, so contact them today at 256-2566 or log on to www.tumbletown.biz. Welcome back to our uh, preseason show uh, here at Dutch Reese Stadium with the Blue White Scrimmage uh, about to go on. Coach is getting a real antsy on us here because the team's not working hard enough at the scrimmage. So we gotta we gotta keep this moving before the the staff we talked so glowingly about uh, might be in a little bit of trouble here in a few minutes. But before we let you escape, just a couple of more things, Coach. 
Uh, you know that they've reconfigured the, the sectional. Obviously, you know that. That was kind of silly. But uh, when you look at the old configuration with Brown County, you guys, Corridan, Edgewood, Heritage Hills, Indian Creek, North Harrison, and Salem, and you compare that to this year's lineup of Brownstown up from 2A, here we are at Charlestown, Corridan, Heritage Hills, Mitchell, who's up from 2A, North Harrison, Salem, and a new program in Silver Creek. Uh, you got to be a little happy with the way that it that it uh, balanced out, don't you? I don't know about happy. I think it. Uh, I think it, it's pretty even trade, is what I think. I thought we could maybe got lucky. Uh, maybe a little bit better, but I, I compare it being a, for the three teams that we lost and three teams that we added, I, I say that's probably, probably pretty even, uh, even trade. Uh, I was hoping maybe Harry Chills would go west, uh, which didn't happen. But, hey, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and uh, we haven't beat that Hall of Fame coach yet, so hopefully he'll stay around long enough to where we can do that. Yeah, we, we talk about, you know, Brownstown. That's obviously a name familiar to us. But, uh, you know, they were right on the edge of, uh, you know, being the one of the top 2A schools as far as uh, enrollees. And now they finally bump up into that 3A. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what their thoughts on it are. But, I, you know, I've heard out, out of their kind of camp that they're kind of excited and think they're better off on their end by moving up into, into our section, which which kind of surprises me. Brownstown thinks that? Uh, that From the words I get out of their camp, they're pretty excited about it. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm happy that I'm glad they're excited. Anytime Reed's happy, we're all happy. Uh, when, Reed, when Reed's mad, he, when Reed's not happy, we all know about it. So I'm, I'm glad Reed's happy. Well, I don't know that I would wish my way into this section. I mean, you know, perennial power, Heritage Hills, you know, they stayed here. But, you know, Coach, I think it's only fitting that they're in here because, you know, they've been the, the thorn. Indian Creek had an awfully good football team last year. But, you know, I, I, like, your, I like your attitude about, Let's beat the best. Heritage Hills is kind of owned. Well, they yeah, football they believe, in this part of the state. Believe me, I would love uh, if you can draw it up and we can uh, uh, play Brownstown for the sectional championship this year. Um, Sign me up. I'll be the, uh, I'll be there, and I'll bring my team with me, and uh, we'll be pretty excited for it. You don't care if you play them here or there either, do you? Uh, we can play anywhere they want to play out in Kmart parking lot. And we'll be there. I'm, I'm with you, Coach. I'm with you. All right. <clears throat> well, we heard from Coach on everything, including the new sectional configuration, so we're going to do a, a little bit of shift of our own, and we're going to bring in the glove. Brian Glover uh, is going to be part of this uh some conversations about the scrimmage and some other things. So thank you to Brian Keith. He's going to step off for a second. And um, here he is, the glove. So how's it going, Brian? Hey, pretty good. How you doing tonight, Coach? I'm doing good. I know you're anxious to get out there. I see you I keep am. looking. I, I'm going to keep this keep, quick. We, we, we got to get going because Wonder what we're, we're going <laughs> to hold him down for us. Uh, well, I see you keep peeking over the over the screen there. So I'm, I'll keep it quick. Um, Looking at your past scrimmages, your your last couple of weeks of practices, um, just just give us a, a quick insight of what you thought about them, how your players are responding. Uh, what do you think about your last scrimmages and practices? Uh, well, we scrimmaged this summer. Uh, we uh, did some stuff with Jeff and also Seymour, and they both went really well. Uh, you know, it's good for us to go against somebody like Jeff for, to see all the speed that they have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we adjusted well, and we played pretty good. Uh, you know, we're young. We're young on defense, and uh, we're young on offense, even though we had a lot of kids playing last year. Um, you know, we're still young, and uh, we got to give our kids ex experiences so they can grow up quicker. And, you know, we're playing a uh, scrimmage in Floyd Central next week is going to help because they're going to be a team that's going to come right at us and be real tough. So, you know, right now where we're at, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a perfectionist, and until we look perfect, uh, you know, I'm not ever going to be happy, but we're getting closer. Well, that's good. Um, we've, I know we've been talking all night about uh, the players leaving, the new players you got coming in. Uh, one thing that really impressed me last year on the sidelines that, that, that I just I couldn't talk enough about was the way the coaches worked together. You all seemed to really gel together. You had the hammers. You had the guys that were the motivators. You really worked together, and I know there's been some coaching changes. Can you kind of run us through some of the changes and tell me how your kids are adapting of those changes? Yeah, they're they're adapting real well. Our kids, uh, our kids do a very good job handling the coaches and uh, you know being coached, and they want to be coached. And uh, we got pretty good kids here at Charlestown. Uh, we lost uh, Drew Curry as receiver coach, and uh, we picked up Chad Vincent. So we all actually lost the uh, ex Clarksville receiver and picked up another one. So uh, Chad's been doing a really good job, and. Uh, 
he uh, actually he, I'm pretty sure he was all state when he played and uh, he was a really good player and uh, he does a, he's doing a good job coaching he, he's really excited about it he's he loves he's like he reminds me of Bradford because uh, he just he loves it and, and that's all he wants to think about when it's time uh, we also picked up Dave Daniel from the middle school which a lot of people in Charleston know who Dave Daniel is and uh, not just because he's Aaron's dad uh, <laughs> Dave Dave's been doing a great job uh, coaching he, he brings up a lot of experience of knowing the kids and uh, he's been coaching defensive line he's been doing really good with that and uh, you know we're excited uh, they've been doing a good job uh, I, I like my coaching staff I think they do a good job they work hard and um, I'm real happy right now well I know we never really last year gave them enough credit but when I was down on the sidelines that was one thing that I really really enjoyed watching was how your coaches really worked together uh, and they all had seemed to have different roles they all seemed to have different personalities and the kids responded well, well so you know I, I try to uh, in the papers uh, talk about like if the offensive line play well just make sure I mean sometimes I might not say coach Van's name but I make sure that the offensive line know they played well and mm -hmm. You know, I try to tell Denny that if that is in there, that means that you did a good job during the week. And same thing with the defense with Coach Bradford. If we had a good job defensively, I try to, you know, throw his – I try to give them as much uh, credit, you know, as I can because, you know, they do deserve a lot of the credit. Uh, I, you can't coach football by yourself. And uh, if, if, if anybody thinks that I think I'm the only reason why we're winning, uh, then they're wrong because I would never say that's the reason. Well, I, I think most people would agree that they, they, they like your coaching staff and I think they like the passion that they coach with. So um, – Again, in your practices uh, that you've had this year, in your scrimmages, you've got to kind of take a look and step back, maybe watch some film and stuff like that. If you had to pick one or two surprise players that, that really kind of surprised you this year, uh, can you narrow that down to one or well, two? Gar Garcia, defense tackles, really surprised me. He was faster than Lightning. Okay. He's going to really cause some problems on offense. It's him and Harper on defense line that they have really been doing very well. And then the receiving core, I think I talked about Cody Donahue, uh, just how, how much he's improved over the year and uh, his attitude's uh, so much better. He's catching the ball. He's blocking when he's supposed to. And, uh, you know, I, I know I Gage Bradford, I counted it on him being that I knew he would what he was going to give me and I Cody's just been a surprise well that's great to hear I, I know that it, it's always nice as a coach to kind of find one of those players that you really never expected to show up and and, and you find one out here and you kind of say wow a little diamond in the rough so uh, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here a little bit defensively last year I, from the sidelines again I kind of saw where Harley Rodriguez was kind of one of those players that was a spark plug of the team when you really needed somebody to kind of step up and get the team fired up and get them moving he seemed to be that player um who do you think is going to be that spark plug this year on your defensive team? I think it's going to be by committee on the defense. I think we're going to be so fast that they better – they're going to have to catch on quick because they want to make plays. They better get there before the other kids get there. <laughs> uh, we're going to be a swarming type of defense. And, uh, well, that's what we see right now. Now, you catch me in a couple weeks and I might tell, I might call them something else other than swarming. <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, they're going to have to be fired up and ready to go. And, uh, you know, we're not really – like, you watch this and, I, you know, and I think Brian's watched this a couple of days and I can hear him say, saying some stuff up in the stands. For whatever reason, we're not like a, a real rah-rah type of team. It's we're, it, it's kind of – we're not that type of team. And, you know, I've, I've had to adjust because I like rah-rah type mm -hmm. teams. It makes me all have, feel happy and warm inside. Right. But <laughs> I've had to adjust. We're not a rah-rah type of team. Our kids make plays, and they think, you know, like, if, when you look at it, they think, hey, I'm supposed to make that play. I go back to the other one, it's my, I'll make another play. They're not, you know, they're not jumping up and down and looking at the, which is good. They're not looking at the opponent and going, ha, 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 I just stuck you. They just go by on their business. And, uh, you know, how we look so far, you know, at times we look like a business type team, and we're just uh, we do what we're supposed to do. We go back to the huddle and we try to do it again. So. Well, it's funny you say that because I know last year w all the commentators kind of talked about how it kind of took this team about a quarter to really warm up and get into the game. I mean, it, especially the defense. Now they played well, but it really took them a quarter to kind of get in where they were slapping each other on the helmets and really mm -hmm. getting people moving. So uh, I, I'm kind of glad to hear that you're in our committee that you're you're kind of a touchy Philly guy like mm -hmm. we are. So uh, anyway, um, that's all I got. I wish you luck tonight in your in your scrimmage tonight right, and uh, uh, I think all of us are, are really looking forward to seeing this team play this year. Well, I let's think hope really you all excited. feel like that in about an hour. <laughs> Yeah, we, we will feel like that in an hour, Coach. I mean, it's exciting. Season five of the of the Hawk Show is on here at Charlestown, and I know you got to get going and get over there. You're about to lose your mind with your eyes bulging out of your head, but thank you All right, for thank joining you. us and taking time out of your right, scrimmage thanks, to thanks. come do that. Good luck to you and the Pirates. Right, Go ahead guys. and jump up and leave, and we'll, uh, All right, we'll, thank we'll you. get Brian and in see here. See you first game, Madison, August 19th. All right, Coach. Thanks again. We uh, Brian uh, Keith back in here, and we'll have a few, few uh, 
comments with Brian also, and, you know, the glove, he tries to sneak off all the time, but he ain't getting away from us this time, folks. We'll, we'll set the whole Motley crew down because we don't get to be on TV very often, so we might be on for two or three more hours yet. But <laughs> no, not. All the production people are saying, no, we can't, guys. Because they're not on camera, bud. you got to understand that. Well, you know, once again, thanks to Coach Hawkins. I know this was tough doing this this way. Thank you to the Digital Connectors for putting us on TV and letting us, letting us have some fun. Uh, thank you to Chuck Ludbetter, who, as always, is the brains of this operation. We could not talk, walk, speak, chew bubble gum, nothing without Chuck and what he does for us here. And, you know, you talk about guys who don't get enough credit, fellas. You know, Chuck is Chuck's that individual. That's right. He gets so mad at me when I do this. So, you know, now he's giving he's me the cut it short. The cut I told out. him we might be on for a couple hours. <laughs> so, you know. But anyway, thanks to Chuck. All joking, joking aside, we couldn't do it without him. You know, thank you to Pirate Nation, all of you who are listening and all of you who are here and all of you that will be joining us at the ball games and and uh you know just it's great to be part of this but uh let's not forget out there the pirates travel to floyd central to scrimmage a week from tonight then the regular season begins friday night under the lights guys on august 19th right here at dutch reese against madison you know don't miss any of the action people the glove before we before we close this out tonight, any last comments? Uh, you know, I, 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 when I came here tonight, I don't know who was more excited about um, football tonight, uh, the commentators or, or, the, or the players on the field. I mean, I know uh, all this group here was really excited. I think we high-fived each other because we were finally getting back into this action of, of calling the games, which I think we thoroughly enjoy. I'm looking forward to this season. I think it's going to be a, 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 an exciting football team. I like to hear um, uh, Coach Hawkins' uh, comments about them being a swarming defense. That, that's fun football to watch when kids are fighting over tackles. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to an interesting season. Before you close us out, Brian, I just want to mention, too, that, uh, you know, Pirate Pride Sports Broadcasting is selling uh, T-shirts this year to help raise some money for uh, for doing this. Believe it or not, it isn't free. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it costs us, you know, thank goodness for uh, Pirate Pride Booster Club. They, they put all the money in it. But we're going to have uh, T-shirts at all the, all the ball games, Pirate Football T-shirts uh, with the schedule on the back. And, and all of those things. So let's uh, any any help you can give us with that, that would be great. So I'll let I'll turn it over to you guys. Can't wait. I know who's the most excited about the season. It's us. That's right. There's no That's question right. about That's that. That's for sure. Because you know we uh, we we live to do this. It pays us well. That's Brian right. will find out just how much we do make doing this. That's why, why we got to sell shirts. Th That's why we got to sell shirts. You negotiated That's your right. contract this year, and it's getting tough, bud. So. All right, yeah. Chuck's giving me the we're out of here, Brian. Take us out. Well, like like Coach Talkins talked about we'd love to see big crowds this season but only if you absolutely can't make it to dutch reach field we'd like for you to tune in to www.charlestownpiratepride.com to carry all the action of this year's pirate team that's going to do us for this year's special edition of talk with hawk and the third annual pirate football season preview show for coach hawkins bud mcquillan brian the glove glover <laughs> and the entire crew good night everybody thanks everyone thank you <laughs> Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating, your local provider of gravel and dirt hauling and custom excavating services. 29 years of diverse experience, including in-ground pools, commercial snow removal, basements, land clearing, and site work. For Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating, no job is too big or too small. You can reach Bill at either 812-256-2406 or 502-930-2408. Bill Broughton Trucking and Excavating.